Hello there, and welcome to my Sorcerer slash Sage PvE rundown. Now remember that everything you learn about the Sorcerer can directly be applied to the Sage, so don't forget that. Before we start, I highly recommend that you guys check out my PvP video. I do an entire ability rundown over there, and a lot of what you learn in that PvP video can be directly applied to the PvE in this one. That being said, this guide's going to be a little bit shorter than my PvP video because I already covered so much in the first half of that, so definitely take the time to go and watch it. First, I'll be going over my PvE ability tree. Second, I'll be going over general rotation, or it's more like priority of each of our abilities. And third, I'm going to be going over footage from an actual operation, so you guys can see how I approach general boss fights. Keep in mind that every single fight and every single flashpoint or operation is going to have different mechanics and that's going to directly influence which abilities you should use and when. So there's no one set way to be doing things, but having a general priority list is going to help you out so much. That being said, the best tip I could really just give you up front before we even get into the nitty gritty is know the boss mechanics. If you're the one on your, on your team that knows all the mechanics and you're able to help people out that might be new of learning the mechanics and uh, learning how to do a certain boss fight, you being the one that knows all of it is going to help you mitigate the damage that your team is actually taking. And if your team is taking less damage, your job is being done as a healer because you don't have to heal as much. So keep that in mind. Preventing damage is so key in PvE. I will be putting timestamps down in the description, so if there's a specific section you would like to skip to, just scroll down a little bit. It's right next to the subscribe button and the bell. So hit both of those on your way down, but feel free to skip forward to whatever section you prefer. All right, let's jump right in. All right, so here in part one, we're gonna just go over our ability tree. It's a quick little rundown. Keep in mind that this is a beginner's entry level PVE learning how to heal guide. Uh, so this, some of this is not going to apply to nightmare content or even hard mode content. This is just kind of an entry level to get your foot in the door and your feet wet so you can kind of learn what you're doing. And as you start to learn the class and you get better at it, you'll be able to figure out the class yourself and make decisions of what ability to use and when, which ability to take for certain fights. It's all going to vary based on the fight and it's going to get a little more complicated later on. And uh, if you guys are more interested in more like hard mode or like nightmare type healing or even boss to boss style healing of like what, sh what kind of how should you heal certain boss fights, that would be fun for me to make. So let me know if you'd be interested in seeing anything like that in the comments. But keep in mind, every single ability is up for debate depending on what fight you're going into. So keep that in mind before before we really get started. The abilities that I take, generally speaking, are Fueled Corruption or I'll go Rally. It just kind of depends on the fight. Keep that in mind. Haste can be good, but I think it's better for PvP. This is good if your tank is going to be taking a lot of single target damage. So I would take this if you're if it's all going to be very uh, single target orientation, but more often than not in PvE, there's a lot of AOE heals and cleaves going around. So you're going to want either one of these options. If you've got a lot of melee DPS, Rally is going to be a little bit better. If your DPS is going to be spread out all over the place, it's generally better to just run Fueled Corruption because you get that extra heal over time that gets applied to them. Next tier up, we've got Dark Power that I like to take. It's just extra healing that allows your Resurgence to twick, tick twice. You're just doing more healing. If you're getting into boss fights where you're getting smacked around a lot, you may want to take Cloud Mind, or if you're picking up a lot of aggro, you may want to pick up Cloud Mind. That'll reduce your threat on the boss and you'll be taking less damage, 25% less damage. Very good. Dark heal, uh, the dark speed with dark heal increases movement speed of your target. It's not really all that useful, not a very good ability. I don't ever see any reason to take it. The other two are just far superior. Dark resurgence, innervate spreads your resurgence up to four allies within eight, eight meters. This is just generally the best one to take out of all the options. It used to be way better, but they decided to nerf this ability from eight allies to four for whatever reason doesn't really make sense to me because operatives are still able to heal up to eight, eight people around them and they were already better so i'm not sure why they decided to nerf sorks in this regard but they did regardless still very good because resurgence is just such a good ability remember check out my pvp guide for a more in-depth analysis of what each ability really does but essentially dark resurgence makes your uh, teammates just 10 percent 
tankier, basically, on a basic level, and it gives them a heal over time. So being able to spread that out to as many allies on your team is super, super good. Polarity Shift increases the healing done of Innervate by 3%. It has its, it has its uses. Like I said, if it's more of a single target, heavy damage fight, this could be better. Either one of these could be better. But in general, it's there's a lot of cleave damage going on and AoE uh, damage going on in, on your team. So having just increasing your AoE healing capabilities and overall protection of your team is just better. Next up is Unlimited Power. This is going to be your raid buff that affects your entire team. If you've got multiple sorcerers or sages, healers on your team that have this ability, you're not going to be able to use it multiple times. So make sure you communicate with your other healer if he happens to be a sorcerer or a sage and make sure that one of you guys takes this ability and the other the other guy takes doesn't take the ability because you can't use the ability twice in a row or use both of the abilities because it's the same effect so a little unfortunate the way that works but this is what i would take you'll, you'll be clicking this when you kind of generally when you get to the burn phase at the end of a fight sometimes up front it'll be good it just depends on the fight so that'll be a communication with you and your team these other abilities don't have as much usage in pve Sometimes the unhindered unhindered resolve, the extra damage reduction could be good, but nine out of 10 times you're gonna want your raid buff. Next up, we've got force mobility. It makes you able to use your innervate while you're moving around because nine out of 10 times you're, you're gonna have to be dodging floor mechanics, like big circles on the ground. So you'll have to keep moving in order to heal. So you'll wanna be taking that in order to stay mobile. Some damage reduction's good. Uh, the static bear isn't going to help much. It's not going to add any sort of DPS that really doesn't do anything. So just being able to move around while healing is just so much better. And it's the quality of life is just huge, especially in PVE and PVP, both of them super good. Next up, Unnatural Vigor. It just increases your self heal so you don't have to heal yourself quite as much and it gives you some damage reduction to yourself. It's better than the other options. There is an argument to be made for surging speed because it reduces the cooldown of force speed and force barrier. And if you combine that with your legendary implant right here, polarity shift is increased by five seconds. And when you use force speed, polarity shift is reduced by five seconds, the cooldown is. So there's an argument to be made there that you're using your force speed more often so that you can that way you can have polarity shift up more often. But more often than not, just have Having a self heal and having that damage reduction is going to be better, but there is an argument to be made for surging speed. It's going to require you to learn the class a little bit more so you can be using force speed more often. That way you can maximize your polarity shift. So in hard modes and in nightmare content, surging speed will end up be making a big difference when tons and tons of damage are going off. But if you're just learning story modes and doing like story mode operations and uh, flashpoints, just take the self heal. That extra damage reduction is going to be helpful and being able to heal yourself more often is just better. Next up, I like to take Whirlwind because every now and then there'll be a certain mechanic that will require you to stun a certain target or stun a certain add so that they're not doing damage to your team or they can't get over to other mechanics. It's very rare, but I'd rather take that than any of the, any of the other options. They don't really do much for you in PvE fights, so I just stick with Whirlwind. Next up, and your last choice that you're gonna be making is either Corrupted Flesh or Immersion. Either one of these can be good. Immersion makes it so that you are you get rid of some movement pairing effects, which could hinder you from being able to get out of certain mechanics like ground circles. So it could be clutch to saving you from taking a bunch of damage but more often than not just having the periodic effects uh not doing nearly as, as much damage because a lot of bosses just like to do big dots on entire teams sometimes and taking 15 percent less damage is going to be good but it's going to depend on the boss fight which is better more often i generally take immersion myself just because every now and then i'm able to get out of mechanics like sometimes i'm slowed and you're not able to get out of a certain ground circle and i just find that more common than uh, overall dots on me or, or being hit by a dot that I just can't cleanse. It's not it's not all that common, but depending on the fight, just know which fight you're doing. If they have a lot of dots, then I would go with Corrupted Flesh. If they've got a lot of CC, then I would go with Immersion. So just know your boss fight. All right, here in part two, we have our general rotation, but it's more of a priority list. Biggest priority, majority of fights, you're gonna see your tank be running into a fight. You're gonna wanna open up before they even get there with just a resurgence. Just throw a resurgence on them because that's going to make them that much tankier and it's going to start ticking their 
healing over time. So they're going to start taking damage from the boss. And usually right up front, the boss likes to give a pretty big smack, depending on the boss fight. So I usually like to just go ahead and throw it on there. They're taunting, so you, they should, you shouldn't be pulling threat right up front as long as they're taunting well. Ideally, you want to throw the, the Resurgence onto them before they get their taunt off. So right after a ready check, if he, if he looks like he's about to go in, throw a Resurgence on him real quick because then he'll, he'll get full threat once he throws his taunt off. So throw that on him so he's got his 10% uh, his, uh, damage reduction right up front, or armor, I think it is. Basically, you'll want to be keeping your resurgence on cooldown. Generally, you want to keep it on your main tank. Depending on the boss fight, you may want to give your resurgence to somebody else that's uh, being targeted by some sort of ability that specifically targets someone. So if you see so-and-so is the target of lightning orbs or something, you may want to throw a resurgence on that target. That way, when they, when they start taking that damage, they're not taking nearly as much of it. But... More often than not, you you just want to keep your resurgence on your tank. Obviously, you want to you want to be healing your entire team, but keep in mind your main tank or your off tank are your main priorities. You got to keep them alive, otherwise your whole team's gonna die. If somebody starts going down a lot, try your best to heal them. But if you have to choose someone, choose your choose your tanks, heal your tanks. Priority list. Resurgence. Your next up priority is generally just gonna be innervate. You want to be resurgencing and then enervating because that way you're getting your consuming darkness stacks where you can get your force back so that way you're not just draining through all your force now just doing resurgence and enervate is not going to sustain healing those are your, those are your go-to heals if they're not taking much damage and the damage is negligible these are your go-to abilities you just want to be resurgence enervate and then you want to be getting your force back because they're they're pretty damn good heals now, if they're starting to take big damage, you'll want you'll generally want to throw off a resurgence on whoever's taking big damage, and then you'll want to throw a roaming mend immediately. Because what that does is if you do roaming mend right after resurgence, it'll make it automatically bounce off of targets without them having to get hit. So, that being said, you throw your your resurgence off, say your main tank is getting hit really hard or uh, DPS is getting hit really hard. You resurgence them, you throw off the roaming mend, and it's gonna bounce back and forth really quick to that same target. So your initial target, even if the other person near them do isn't really taking damage, it's gonna bounce back to them several times and hit them at least two or three times. So they're getting two to three really big heals really quickly. So resurgence, roaming mend, it's gonna bounce back and forth really quickly. You see, him, you see it kind of bouncing between them, but roaming mend is your is your butter. You want to be spreading it around, basically keeping it on cooldown. If somebody's taking a bunch of damage, resurgence, roaming mend as quick as you can. More often than not, you'll you'll be fine. There won't be in dire straits. You can just throw an innervate. But that's that's generally all you need to be worrying about is priority as priority. Now. If uh, you know a bunch of damage, big damage is going to be coming in, or you're in like an oh oh shit, I'm in a bad situation, you want to be utilizing your polarity shift. So what I like to do is I'll toggle polarity shift, I'll resurgence, and then I'll hit my recklessness, and then I'll be throwing off dark infusions because it'll go really fast because of your polarity shift. It'll be reduced even more because your resurgence reduces uh, the cast time of dark infusion and then you get your dark heals. So that's like your biggest, fastest heals. And if you take Fueled Corruption, you also get a healing over time with your dark infusion. So Polarity Shift, Recklessness, Resurgence, and then throw off your dark heal, or your dark infusion, your long cast, and then your dark heal, because it'll your dark infusion procs your dark heal to be free to cast, and it increases its power. So that's, that's your... Oh, somebody just took a bunch of damage, a, a bunch of damage, and you want to top them off as fast as you can. Resurgence, Dark Infusion, Dark Heal. But generally, more often than not, if, if Roaming Mend is uh, usable, even, even if they're taking a bunch of damage, you'll just want to Resurgence, Roaming Mend. And then, and then you might be able to use Recklessness and then Dark Infusion. But notice how much slower Dark Infusion casts, casts if you don't cast the Resurgence before it. So it's going to be situational, situational decision making. So that being said, 
Priority number one, Resurgence. Priority number two, Innervate. That way, you're able to keep your force topped up. You're not just constantly draining through all your force. If things start to get a little dicey, Resurgence, Roaming Mend. Option number two, if your Roaming Mend is down, Resurgence, Dark Infusion, Dark Heal. Now, you've got AoE, you've got AoE as well. What I like to do is Resurgence, and then I throw my Puddle down because you get an instant cast. You don't have to sit there and cast the entire uh, revivification. It's gonna depend on the boss fight when, it, when you should use it, but more often than not, your melee DPS is gonna be stacking up right behind the boss, or your ranged DPS is all gonna be standing right together, and using revivification to top off your team is going to be the ideal option. You're not gonna to wanna to heal each person individually. So AOE heals wise, throw off your resurgence, then throw your revivification around. It's all gonna be situational, but you can also hit re uh, resurgence and then use your roaming mend. And that'll heal everybody in a little group very rapidly. But then your revivification won't be instant cast, but you can always full cast it as well. But though that's not efficient. Now, if if you take took the dark resurgence, like you should have, because I, I think it's just better, Innervate spreads your resurgence up to four allies within eight meters. They nerfed that down from eight to four for whatever reason, still salty about that. But essentially, I targeting myself, I cast resurgence on myself. If I innervate myself, now when I innervate myself, it's going to spread my resurgence to uh, four other allies around me. So that's AOE healing. It's slow healing over time, but it also gives each of them that 10% uh, armor buff as well. So you would go resurgence, revivification, and then make sure you use your Innervate on the target that you used Resurgence on, because then it'll spread your Resurgence around. But as far as AoE healing goes, Resurgence, Revivification, and then target the same target that you gave your Resurgence to, Innervate. And that'll spread a bunch of healing, uh, healing all around you. You can even, and by the time that gets on cooldown, then you can hit Resurgence again and throw off your Roaming Mend. That'll be the most efficient way to get everybody healed up in a group as fast as possible. Don't forget about your self heal right up here. Any self heals, basically using it on cooldown on yourself means you're not using resources to heal yourself, so that's good. Be using it on cooldown. If you're about to die, don't forget your force barrier. That's your, that's your oh crap button. Keep that in mind. You've got your overload, so if a bunch of ads are jumping on you that shouldn't be on you and the tanks haven't been able to pick them up yet, make sure you throw your overload so you can knock them back, get them away from you. Last thing to mention, Static Barrier. It's not gonna be a part of your main rotation, but it can be very clutch. If all of your big abilities are on cooldown of being able to top somebody off very quickly, then you can just throw a Static Barrier on them. It'll keep them alive for just that much longer where your other abilities might be able to get on cooldown because your GCD will be faster than the full cooldown of an ability like Roaming Mend for example, or a vivification. So keep that in mind that throwing static barrier around every now and then can be good, but it can be, it can, the force cost can add up very quickly. So don't be spreading them around to your whole team because they'll run out of force really quick, really quickly. And it's not as efficient. That's it for the priority of abilities. I hope I made that clear enough for you guys to be able to make some decisions of what ability to use and when. It's all going to be very situational, so there's no one set in stone rotation of how to do things. It's all about, should I use this heal combination right now or this other heal combination right now? What's more efficient? Keep in mind that you don't, the biggest issue you can have is running out of force. Focusing on your resurgence and your innervate so that you can get your consuming darkness back so that you can top off your force is very and very, very important because if you run out of force, you're not able to heal at all. So you're just dead weight on the team. So you don't want to, you don't want that happening to you. You shouldn't have issues with it as long as you're throwing your innervates and you're throwing your consuming darkness into your general rotation of why you're healing. If you see your consuming darkness have its gold outline, use it as long as people aren't dying. You can let your force get lower if people are in dire straits, but if people are at healthy health levels, then Use your Consuming Darkness to get your force back. 
intentionally try to replenish your forest is basically what I'm saying. Next up, I'll be doing a little play-by-play -play of an actual raid operation and be giving you a little bit of a step-by-step uh, -step guide of how I approach each specific boss fight. Keep in mind, you gotta know the mechanics for whatever fight you're doing, but I'll just give you an overall overarching game plan of what I'm doing in retrospect. All right, so I've got a EV pulled up from a rather recent story mode EV run that I did on stream and Pardon the Londoa Inception that's going to be happening. This is me, actual me, in retrospect up here, and that's old me in the past. He's not as cool. Um, but just keep in mind, I don't have any of my healing parsing up. And basically what that is, is you can see how much healing I'm doing over time. But I generally average anywhere between 18 to up to 23, 24 healing per second. It just depends on the fight. It's always going to depend on the fight. And keep in mind that if you're not hitting high parses, doesn't necessarily mean you're doing a bad job healing. It could mean that you're doing such a good job healing that you just don't have to heal as much. So not being able to heal and having low parse numbers in a raid is generally a good thing. Not, not being able to hit that high of numbers is good. But that's all going to go out the window in hard mode and nightmare. So keep that... Uh, keep that in mind that this is just story mode but this is entry this is entry level beginner's guide for people that are looking to get into pve healing so keep that in mind don't worry so much about what kinds of numbers you're doing just focus on the fundamentals and it's all just going to happen naturally don't worry so each fight's going to be a little bit different this particular fight this first robot that we're <laughs> robot don't flame me this first droid that we're about to face loves to do a ton of AoE damage. So hopefully, I don't remember how uh, all of these fights go. So we'll kind of go through this together um, so that it's not in intimidating to you guys. And you'll probably see me mess up. You'll see the team mess up. And that, that's, the beauty of the, that's the beauty of the game. Don't let it stress you out. That's how it goes. But we're just going to walk through it together so it makes it a little less daunting to you if you're trying to get into healing. So here we go. It's like, bro. Yeah, I don't like it. I'm don't having like some it. wine while we do this. Hope that's cool. Proximity violation. I have been armed with 24 distinct weapons. I look so much smaller in this camera. Is that weird? Is it because of my sweater? Or is it because the camera's smaller? Shut up, Lundo. We're watching something. Play! So notice all of this AoE damage going off right now. This is inevitable. Certain, certain boss fights, they're just going to do that damage. It kind of sucks. I should be standing a little closer over here from, with the rest of my group, but I've done this fight so many times that I'm just like, I don't really need to. I know we're going to be fine. It's not a big deal, but... Regardless, I should be standing closer to the group, so this is good so you guys can see my errors on what to do better. Group up with your group if they're grouping. If everybody's standing in the same spot, that's probably where you should be standing, so keep that in mind. But I've done this fight so many times, I'm not that worried about it. Tons of damage. Look at all that damage. It's crazy. I'm throwing some AoE heals down. Simple enough. But I know all that damage is going to go out right there, so I'm just kind of I'm just kind of letting it happen. I could be doing a better uh a little bit better of a job um AoE healing right here, but this is story mode. It'll get better, but it's nice to show you guys some of uh some of what to improve because just seeing me do a flawless job of a boss, you don't really get to see the issues that you are probably that you're probably making or you will make if you haven't uh pve pve healed yet so here we go here we go this is a little later in the night so i'm not trying i'm not trying to punch out crazy numbers or do anything crazy so i do know what i'm doing it looks like i don't right now i promise but it's an easy fight. I'm not too stressed about it. So that's how you need to approach fights anyways. 
Don't let it stress you out. Just doing some general healing. Quick tip here, you don't see me clicking any of my abilities except for some of my cooldowns over here. All of these abilities are key mapped to either things on my mouse or on my keyboard or to shift mouse or shift keyboard buttons. And that makes it just so much easier because you can just click right here, any of the people's health that's going down. And then you can click the, the move your cursor off and then click the healing ability. It's much easier. It's much easier to do that, do it that way instead of clicking here and then going down here and clicking and clicking all of your abilities. That's just much slower. So key map and hotkey your abilities. That's, there's a good tip for you. General AOE healing. Notice I'm getting really low on force, so I'm working on my consuming darkness. I should be doing a better job of using my consuming darkness when I get the stacks more often. So make sure you're doing a better job of that. Because you shouldn't be getting that that low on force. But again, I've done this so many times and it was the end of the night that I'm just like, I know we'll be fine. I don't really need to maximize right now. But when you're starting to run low on force, resurgence, innervate, use all your stacks that you get. But basically, whenever you're consuming darkness is uh, glowing, you'll want to sprinkle that in there whenever you possibly can, as long as it's not at the expense of other uh, healing others. I have been armed with 24 distinct weapons technologies. And Kenobi, Kenobi is the other healer. You saw me in, like not really healing him right there because. He's a healer himself, so I figured he had some self heals, or he was gonna take care of himself a little bit. So I was focusing more on the tank there. Um, may have not been the greatest decision because he sat so low for so long. I figured he would have done something about it, but I think he was on the newer side as well. So that's that's why that happened. Now you see me going in there to help him out while everybody else is going down and I'm like, oh no, like, uh, where you at? Where you at? And all that's inevitable damage. On certain fights, people are just going to be taking these big chunks of damage. I'm still standing too far away from the group. That's my fault, but there it is. Some AOE heals right there. Trying to spread uh, resurgence innervates around right there to my team. Trying to get everybody back up again. Using my self heals. Recklessness. Recklessness with my innervate because I know I'm, I'm realizing I'm going to be starting to get low on force here. So I'm going to need to uh, consuming darkness here to get some force back. So I use recklessness to actually guarantee crits on my innervate so we can get uh, consuming darkness back. And you see me kind of focusing on that, on that right here. But yeah, it's basically just, that's basically it. Rinse and repeat. I could be doing a better job of standing closer to my team so I can do a uh, more AOE healing. Yeah, like uh, the Tatiana on the team, he's standing way too far away, like way, way too far away that you see how my roaming mend, that's a good, that's a good thing to point out. You see my roaming mend right here? It's having to bounce back and forth so far that it's not healing nearly as fast and taking nearly as fast. So there's that, there's that. You're going to get slowed down by people not following proper mechanics of standing just way too far away because that affects uh, healers greatly, greatly. So... There's only so much you can do some t sometimes. Proximity violation. Oh, and I'm not ignoring my chat. I, I, I saw them talking and stuff, but uh, Tack is actually my uh, mother-in-law. 
and she pops into my stream sometimes. So I'm just kind of like, I don't want to answer my mother-in-law's questions on stream right now. So that's all that is. <laughs> it's my wa my wife's mother. I have been armed with 24 distinct weapons technologies. Inevitable damage. Try to get some AOE healing off because that's basically all this is. It's just straight AOE. But notice how like I'm not like panicking. Like I know this damage is coming, so that's why I premise the video with know the boss mechanics because if you know what they're gonna do and like how much it hurts, then you'll know what heals to do and when, and you can just kind of you're not you're not worried about it. You're not frantically trying to heal or like I, or the whole team's going down like this where you're like oh you start panicking and like clicking crazy abilities and doing weird things out of order. Generally, there's not anything. You're not. You, you, it's hard to not do a very good job as long as you're constantly using an ability. So that's a good rule of thumb is any idle time is bad. There's always a heal you can be throwing off that's either free or will even help you get force back. So just constantly be using healing abilities and you'll be good. But stick to the priority in part two that I showed. Stick to the priority list for sure. Threw off a polarity shift right now because a couple of people are very, very low. So I want to, and my force is very full. So this is where I'm going to start bursting, burst healing the entire group and trying to do as much as I can to get people back up again. Because I already knew that all that damage was coming. Now I can just. I prioritized my other healer right here over other people. Usually the operation frames are laid out like this, where this will be the main tank right here. This will be the off tank, generally speaking. So you'll want to prioritize those two. But again, I know this boss fight, the off tank shouldn't be taking that much damage anymore because you shouldn't be getting focused that much. So I focused on the healer over that, especially over the DPS. The DPS, they're not going to be taking much damage throughout here, except for a little bit of cleave here and there. So just know your boss fights. You'll notice people standing in some of the red spaces, so they're taking unnecessary damage in this phase. So that's why I also said knowing the boss fight and being able to communicate how the boss fight works, especially to newer players, that'll help them take less damage. So if you think about it, it's technically healing because you're uh, making them not lose health, right? You know what I mean. Beautiful. Just a lot of rinsing and repeating here. Dodging the stuff on the ground because not taking damage is better than healing. Ow! I'm sure I can't use my raid buff. Yeah, and I can't use my raid buff here because my... Uh, that's It's probably because Kenobi is also a sage or sorcerer. He's a sorcerer, actually. Highlighted right here. So he probably already used his raid buff... So that's probably why I can't use it right there. So that's why I also premised, if you're taking your raid buff, communicate with your other healer so you don't have this issue where you can't use your raid buff. It's better for one of you guys to take the other ability so that you're getting just that much more healing um, in that tier, tiering bracket. You can get a little bit more heals out, uh, healing numbers out if you don't take the rally, but the rally is just far superior. So communicate with your other healer if you have the same uh, class. And I die here, but it's fine. The boss is dead. I'm sure why I wasn't able to use my raid buff. Warning. What up, Tax? Sorry, sorry, sorry. 
just not reading. How you doing, Tak? And I die there because uh, I was standing too far from the group, not even getting my own AoE heals. It was a stupid mistake, but this is perfect to show you guys that you don't need to panic. This is a story mode. I'd be taking it a lot more serious if I was playing it in hard mode or uh, veteran mode or nightmare, whatever you... What is it? Master mode? Um, I'd be taking it a lot more serious, but this just goes to show you that you can play story mode. You can even not play it optimally and be doing a very good job healing. You can get by, you know? Four. <laughs> this is a beginner's learning guide, and this is this is perfect to show you. There we go, yeah, and that's a that's a one ba boss fight. So I'm going to kind of skip okay. forward to the next boss fight, and it'll show you some other mechanics, and it's a lot of AoE healing as well, but I'm going to skip forward to that one. All right, we've arrived at Garsh. Garsh. <laughs> Super good. Super, super good. Fam stream. <laughs> the babies. Why baby rage? The baby only comes out when Junior's in here. What's up with that? What's up with that? What's up with that? So, this boss fight is pretty simple. The tank faces the boss away because if he's facing the group, he does a lot of damage to the whole group, so he faces him away from the group. So, there's inevitable AOE. They're, he's going to knock everybody back, so we all have to get back on the platform and heal up. It's just a lot of AOE healing and uh, a decent amount of single target healing too, but it's a simple boss fight, so we'll just kind of watch through it. It's uh, it's very similar to the last one. It's just a little less chaotic, I would say. Bob Ross Kappa, man. Y'all are nuts. Just some AoE healing. Throwing my revivification down. Ideally, I keep saying it, know the boss fight and the mechanics so that you, if you know that your team can group up, tell them to group up because that just makes healing easier and that makes you a better healer. So there you go. Inevitable damage. Now I have to do a bunch of healing raid wide. So you'll see a lot of Resurgence, Innervates, Revivifications, Roaming Men's. Yep. Spreading the love. And I actually preemptively use a couple of my abilities because I know a big knockback's coming right there where we're going to get knocked into the lava and start taking another big chunk of damage. So I want to be ready that when we get back onto the, the platform, uh, I'm I'm al I'm already maximized for my uh, ACR. This is actually an al alacrity rec relic that I'm using right here. I don't I'm not using it right now anymore, but at this time of filming is what I had. So it, it just works, boosted alacrity, so I can cast faster. But I knew it was coming, so I'm preemptively preparing for as soon as we get done with the knockback that I'm able to get back on the platform and like heal heal everybody up uh, quickly. I use my resurgence and then my revivification. You notice that because it's an instant cast on the revivification. Very nice. So I can get that going ASAP because it's your best heal because it applies to your whole team as long as they touch it. And then I focus on the lowest and just kind of work my way up. Again, tanks should be a priority, but if they're looking fine, keep your DPSs and your healers topped off. Notice I almost went to heal these guys, but the tank's starting to get a little bit lower, so I want to make sure that he's feeling healthy, because he's the most important. Uh, uh, replenishing some force.
that was an, that was uh, the reason he died right there is because you, you see how the boss is turned around. Yeah, the tank accidentally turned the boss a little too soon, so that uh, this Kumanite guy got hit by that uh, that uh, cleave of Garge. So he was sitting fine, kind of like the rest of them, but he he was. It's not really the DPS's fault. The tank kind of turned them a little too early and a little too sharply. I see what he was trying to do. He's trying to face the boss this direction. Uh, th be that direction. Wait, no. That direction so that we can all run this way. But he turned him a little too far, and that's why Kuma went down right there. Not sure why the tank decided to run through the lava right here. I understand trying to keep the boss from facing away from the group, but I could have communicated to him that if he just kept guard facing away from the, the group, I can always just pull him to the next platform. Like, But yeah, because you, you've got your, your uh, extrication where you can like pull a friendly ally, and that could be useful in PvE for things like that, but... Yeah, remember, this is just like a random group of random people all coming together, and we've all got different ways of doing certain bosses, and yeah. So, that, that seems a little silly to run across the lava like that, but it's okay. Some AoE heals going up again. Notice how this healer, or this uh, DPS didn't want to come over to both of our healing puddles to get some extra healing. That's why it seems like we're not doing as much healing sometimes. And if you're a DPS that happens to be watching this, if you see these puddles down, just come touch it real quick. You don't have to stand in it. Just come and touch them and then you can move on. You'll get a bunch of heals. You guys are arguing in my chat? What's going on? Can't really read and play at the same time sometimes. Sometimes I can. Again, he kind of the boss or the tank decided to come over here and face guard towards the melee DPS right here. So they're taking crazy amounts of damage. It's going to happen. But if you can point these things out as a healer, and prevent that damage from being done, that makes you a good healer, because them not taking damage can be considered healing because they're not dying. Right? Exactly. Mm. And that, that's not good. The tank needs to be kind of facing him away from the group and then we can pull him either pull him over to the other platform so that we're not taking all this a big old aoe damage which makes it hell for the healers to try to heal through um or he just faces them away enough and then he can run and we can heal him on his way over i mean there's there's multiple different ways instead of just like facing guards literally towards the entire group as they're crossing the platform so there's certain there's certain boss fights where it's going to be inevitable but this is good to show you guys because this is just random people coming together to do it and none none of these people dying and like lack of health is at all the healer's fault like we our healing numbers are actually good I'm not I didn't parse this particular one but I mean I can tell this is this is normal. There's just a lot of unnecessary damage being thrown out everywhere by uh generally just bad uh tank handling of facing the boss towards the uh, the team. So just how it goes, but this is a good example of how things generally go.
I don't remember if we actually clear this one. We might, we, uh, we might actually, uh, die on this one because, uh, of just poor mechanic handling. Cause we're getting, we're getting pretty low and take, we took a lot of unnecessary damage. People dying in the lava. And it's not, this is not, this is not healing fault. This is not healer's fault, but it just goes to show yeah, what does healers have to deal with. Really bad. Yeah, this boss is pretty cool, right? Yeah, I think we might actually lose. I don't, I don't remember if we lost this fight first try. I think we, uh, I think we might have, and then we came back and did it. Yeah, we do. We do lose this fight. Trying to get a battle res off. But I think it's a I think it's a little too late. Cause now we now we have two DPS dead. So we're not able to do enough damage to the boss in order to uh kill him. So he's gonna hit his en enraged timer where we're not able to finish the fight because too much unnecessary damage was taken by our DPSs. very low on force here because I've been trying to panic heal and that's exactly something I've been trying to tell you guys to avoid so make sure you're keeping your consuming darkness whenever it's glowing try to keep that try try to keep using it when it's glowing otherwise you get into this position where I don't have any force and I just can't even heal so it's bad Notice how I force speeded out of the pool because I took 17,000 damage from the lava right there. If I would have not used it, I probably would have taken another 17,000. So the faster you can get, can get out of it, the less damage you're taking, the more you can heal. Or the less you have to heal is a good way to think about it too. This is where uh, Garge starts to get really angry because we haven't killed him yet. Healing, healing, healing. That's right. And my teammates aren't doing that much damage and I can't use my raid buff for some reason. I know the reason. <laughs> because the other the other guy has already used it. Which is weird. Yep. He's enraged. See how he's glowing more red? That means he's doing like a crap ton more damage. It, we just took too long to kill him because we had D two DPS dead half the time because uh, poor mechanic management. That's why I premised knowing the fight is your biggest key to success in PvE. So I'm going to let you watch me die real quick. There it is. Now I'm going to fast forward to... When we actually beat Garge, and we did all of the all of the things correctly this time, so that's why it goes so much better. So let's skip forward. Yeah, maybe not that forward. But look how look how much more health everybody has, and how much healthier they have. Because I talked to the group. Uh, some of them actually, I think in this one, were like kind of salty. They're like, "What's going on? Like we're not we're not healing, not getting enough heals and stuff." And completely wrong wrong things it's it's poor mechanic manipulation and the tank aiming the boss in wrong directions it's all it is
Um, but we talked about it. We figured it out like men and we were able to finish the entire operation. So if things start to get toxic, that's another good advice. Just let people say their piece, let them say whatever they want. Just do your job the best and don't worry about it. Like I know I was doing well. I know I was healing fine. Like it's not that, uh, I, I told them what the issues were. It was addressed and like, look how much healthier everyone is going into this phase. Like it was, it was just way better. It was just way better. So communicate how to do a boss and like what the issues are. If you're having issues with a boss, ha having that know-how as a healer just makes you a better healer because you're not having to heal as much. And that's, that's ideal. Healers aren't, uh, these batteries that have infinite resources of healing. So there you go. Look how healthy everyone is. Look how beautiful this is. Beautiful. So much better. Again, Gar just facing the group right here. I know he's the tank is trying to pick up the adds, but the adds, if the DPS can just kill them, he shouldn't have to do that. It's all again, it's always gonna depend on whether you're doing hard mode or whatever. It's always gonna vary what mechanics to do and when, but yes. Some more example of like unnecessary damage that, that's happening. Beautiful. So much better, though. So much better. And there he goes. Down he goes! Now I'm gonna fast forward. I'm just typing in chat telling you, I'm like, there you go. So much better. Great job, guys. Words of affirmation like that just make everything work so much better as well. Alright, fast forward. Uh, the pylon fight, like the puzzle fight, this one isn't anything crazy um, uh, more often than not your your tanks and your dps will be able to do all that this is not a specific how-to guide on certain boss fights this i just you you split your group in half you're healing you're healing you're doing whatever extra damage you possibly can very simple very simple this next fight however is very good uh to show um healing yourself at the same time as throwing extra DPS. So we'll go through this. Um, keep damaging abilities on your hotbar because there's going to be situations like this where you're going to actually need to do some extra side DPS, especially when you get to hard mode and nightmare. You're going to want to be sprinkling in uh, your dots and uh, doing some extra damage as well as healing. So this is just a good example of this, a good example of that. I used uh, my self heal pretty early in it because it gives me damage reduction as well. So but in this one, I'm uh, I click a lot of my abilities for my damaging abilities because I don't have it like set up in like a very intuitive like rotation of just doing damage right now, at least at this at this point of filming. And uh, so I'm clicking a lot of my abilities because this is a very specific fight and I do something, do things in a very specific order. So I, I, I don't, I, I'm clicking a lot of my abilities here manually because it's just easier to see it. And in this fight specifically, you don't want to accidentally click certain abilities like your roaming mend. I've done that before where it heals another person because it could cause the entire thing to wipe. So know your boss fight.
getting towards the end of the fight, running low on force, because I need to keep uptime on my abilities. It's a, it's a pretty tight fight, even on hard mode. Hard mode and story mode kind of go the same, except you're just going to have a little bit less health in hard mode. So Got him. Mm -hmm. And that's that fight. Then we move on to Soa. Soa. This fight's nice to run through because it shows you a lot of single target healing, AoE healing, but specifically AoE healing and uh, optimizing healing as far as an AoE goes. So I'll kind of do a little bit of a play-by-play -play of how to approach just general AoE healing here. It's very good. I tried to pull them back because the floor falls right here. It just saves like a, a, just like a little bit of damage and makes it a little easier on me, but he's just like, nah. Okay. Yep. So throw my resurgence or my revivification down as soon as I can. Uh, roaming men's uh, resurgence innervates to kind of spread my resurgence around. Yep, that's basically it. We might actually, we might actually die this first time because I think we like take it too slow. I don't remember. Do we? Yeah, we do. Yeah, this is good. This is good to show though. This is good to show because we go down the platforms too slowly. I think is what happens. Oh yeah, somebody like completely died there. What happened there? I forget. I think somebody just like completely fell and like missed the jump or something. Yeah, like so just like completely like jumped off the platform or something and like fell and died, which automatically causes us a bunch of issues. Which is fine. It, it's not a big deal. I mean, things happen. You don't see me like pissed about it. I'm just kind of like, OK, <laughs> all right. Just when in doubt, follow the group. This is a good example of AoE healing because every time you drop a platform, you take mandatory damage. So being able to top people off as fast as possible because you have to get down these platforms as fast as possible. So. Other healer kind of dropped his revivification a little too far where I don't think everybody touched it. So little things like that. I should have probably dropped it a little closer over here as well, but you know. Now, where does this all go really wrong? Yeah, see how see how it took way too long to get down the platforms. I'm sticking with the group here because I'm the healer. I'm trying to keep people alive. But if we're going too slow, we're going too slow. So everybody would have died there anyways. Everybody's uh, going a little too slow, taking too much time. Everybody falls to their death. That's how it goes. So you got to be quick on that <sighs> one for sure. But uh, we'll skip forward to that phase again. It's right around here. Uh, oh, that's a little too far. So we make it down, taking still taking a bunch of damage, but we're trying to do some AOE healing to get everybody up. So do your priority AOEs. Resurgence, revivification is your biggest go-to. Resurgence, revivification, and then uh, you can whoever you use your resurgence on, then you innervate, and then by that time. You'll have your resurgence again, hit resurgence, and then roaming mend, then roaming mend for AoE healing, for fa the fastest AoE healing that you can do. And if you actually take uh, Rally, where you heal two people with your uh, Dark Infusion, that's better AoE healing than taking the Dot, or the, the Heal Over Time Dark Infusion. So in this particular fight, that would be better. Yep, and then uh, it's just kind of rinse and repeat. I'm not really going to go over every little mechanic in every single boss fight. Uh, there's all kinds of guides and like how to 
beat certain bosses. I just kind of want to show you how how healing looks and feels. The tank actually goes down there. It just took too much damage because people weren't doing the mechanics right. But it's okay. We're able to get him back up. Taking tons of damage because the tank died. But see, even with all of these mistakes, if you know what you're doing healing rotation-wise and making your decisions correctly, you can still uh, get through it. You can still get through it. It's okay. Another falling phase, so just some AoE healing. Trying to keep everybody topped up. We all decided to just go for this platform jump. It's a little bit more damage, but it saves a good bit of time. AoE healing, spreading the love. I go ahead and start to use uh, some cooldowns because just keeping everybody topped up as high as they possibly can before we get to the bottom is very key. You don't want to, everybody to take a bunch of damage and then heal them. Trying to keep them as full as they can, in the, at least in this phase, is generally better. Using my self heal so I don't have to heal myself as much and I can spread love to other people more. at the bottom and we're already looking much healthier than than usual it was a good platform phase much cleaner just getting some last minute aoe heals up making sure i get my force as topped up as i can here it's more important than getting that last sliver of health for people making sure your force is good is a little more important that's basically it it's just a rinse and repeat for this just general top off maintenance Healing everybody as much as we can. Using our priorities. Keeping our force high. That's basically it. Eventually he goes down. Getting pretty close. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Oh, the, uh, oh yeah, this is where it bugged. I forgot about this. The comp the fight completely reset right here, actually, but it all goes according to plan again. We just do the whole fight again, and it works out smoothly. But right there, so it really bugged out. Um, we were like in the middle of fighting him. Actually, I think I can watch him watch him do it. Yeah, right there, we hit him, and then he like backs up a little bit, but then he just bugs. You saw that, and he just disappeared, and he reset at the top. So we had to we had to kill ourselves in the lava and come back. Then we beat him again. We do the whole process, get him all the way to the bottom. Being a little more active again. Boom. He doesn't glitch out. We get to the last phase. We get to the last phase. We finally get him. But that's just with random people. A bunch of random people. I don't think anybody knew each other mutually. Just, just. Random group to get him together smooth. to do it. Pretty smooth, pretty smooth. Perfect. Yeah, realistically, uh, pretty smooth for just random people. Um, it's going to happen. That's kind of how raids go, even on story mode, that there's new players. And, you know, it's it's not going to be super clean and super beautiful. Um, and that's totally okay. Uh, it's generally going to be harder on the healers for newer players. But um, that's just how it goes. Just how it goes. Hopefully you got uh, some takeaways from that, and uh, just don't panic. Uh, if you don't know how to do a boss fight, then check out uh, boss fight videos. There are videos for almost like every single boss fight specifically, or just entire raids out there uh, that you can check out to learn the mechanics, or you can just read actual text guides, and that'll tell you what to be looking for. And if you know, know all that as a healer, it just makes it that much easier. You can just prevent... All of that damage from happening, and if everybody knows how to prevent that damage, that's perfect because you don't have to heal as much, so your job is being done. There you go. Thank you guys so much for checking out this PvE guide for the Sorcerer and Sage. I have read your comments, and I will be uploading some more specific content of just probably 
snippets of my live streams of uh, either good operations or good PvP matches. I'll just be uploading that every now and then. So stay tuned, make sure you hit the bell below and hit the subscribe button so that you know when I've got new videos coming out. And definitely check out my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash Lundoa. It's right here somewhere. Sweet, see y'all in the next one. Peace.